This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 21st, 2016. In this episode, we're going to talk all about safe surfing. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. One o'clock, folks. It's red. It's go time. So um, I just uh, we want to do one thing for you that you asked about before the class. So we're going to quickly run through how to get rid of a program that turned up on the computer you don't want. Well, technically, this yeah, Windows computer. Seven or Windows oh, Ten. XP. Oh, XP. Okay. Well, same deal. Uh, same deal. Um, you have the control panel on your desktop. Okay, so we'll go to control panel wherever it is. Okay. Control panel. All right. And on your Windows XP, it uh, it will not be programs and features. Uh, it will be. The third icon down, I think it is. Uh, what is it, James? Man, <laughs> I don't remember. It's been so long. Yeah. I think, I think it's called anyway. um, uh, something uninstall programs and yeah. uninstalling programs. Yeah. yeah. yeah change, like okay. Change it. So programs. you get in there, and um, you'll get a list of the programs on your computer. Then you can go down to through that list and find the one that's on your desktop and you will click on it and when you do uninstall will appear in this bar click on uninstall and it will uh, ask you a couple of questions are you sure you want to do this and you follow the instructions of the computer yeah yeah it sounds like you've gotten something in your computer that was a mistake or something tricked you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And uh, did you have another question? No. Okay. Um, all right. So that takes care of the preliminaries of starting up here. Uh, today, we're going to have a quick lecture. Five. Um, yes, at five. On safe surfing and the vectors by which stuff gets into your computer. Um, now when we use the word vector, uh, it's, it's also a, a medical term of how viruses move around. What's the path that they go through? The vector. So we use the same word in, in computer science. What's the path that they go around? The vector. And so we're gonna, today we're going to talk about uh, safe surfing. And um, the first thing that you have to understand is that any internet resource can be compromised by the nasty guys. And when we say any, we mean any. Web pages, downloads, mail, um, any resource, pictures, music, any resource on the internet can be compromised. Okay. With that in mind, we'll go ahead and uh, and continue on here that um, any piece of hardware that you have that your friends have that can attach to your computer and in rare instances including printers um, can be a compromise to your computer when I say printers uh, there's lots of printers around that print pictures and you you put a flash memory card in them okay if that flash memory card is compromised and you plug that printer into your your uh, your setup to to use their printer with their flash memory card you're now compromised okay so printers yes they can be a so a vector for 
uh, a path to compromise your computer with something. All right, so we're going to go through these four today, um, which pretty much covers them all. Uh, websites, email, uh, web plugins that are Java and Adobe, Adobe products, not just Adobe Reader, but Adobe products, and uh, peripherals such as USBs and hard drives and stuff that you plug into your computer from the outside can compromise your computer if something got onto that hard drive it's one of your friends you plug their stuff in you have what they have um, even to the point where um, as far as peripherals goes and hardware nobody is really checking very very closely uh, stuff from China Okay, stuff from Chinese um, companies that are closely aligned with the government, like Huawei. Huawei is a big phone maker. They're also a big router maker. And for uh, most of the chipsets that come in from Chinese routers are made by Huawei. And 99.9% .9 of all routers are Chinese made with Huawei parts. So have these routers been compromised by the Chinese government through Huawei? There was some evidence, be it sketchy, a couple of years ago that this is what was happening. People have not dove into that as far as I would like as someone who um, is skeptical of everything so have they gotten the all clear mm, probably not okay that's just one thing to look at but can you do something about it no there's nothing you can do about it you gotta buy the stuff so you live with the compromises. Websites. The first thing that we're going to talk about is web scams. And, and everybody has seen this one probably. Well, not everyone, but has heard of it. Um, the first thing that this thing does is it shows you this little castle. Okay? Which, in your mind, if you're using... Microsoft's antivirus product is that little castle. And so you see the little castle and you say, oh, Microsoft is trying to tell me something. That my computer's been compromised. Um, are they? No. It's a picture. Security Essentials. The little castle. It's trying to tell you stuff like your computer is compromised and maybe it will lock the page. Yeah, you can't get out of it. That happens. And there's the number to call to have someone empty your wallet. Um, that's one type of scam. I mean, and, and look what they've done. They, they put Microsoft's logo here uh, they make it look for all the world like a scan is going on. This little bar moves, and it's no. Well, it, it may yes, it's 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 against the law, but um, they, they 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 sue one mutt, and another mutt pops up the next day. Okay, so how do you stop it? You don't. Microsoft knows that. All you can be sure of is that there is no such thing as telephone support for Microsoft. If a telephone number appears on your computer saying, we would like to talk to you from Microsoft, it's a lie. Okay? It's a lie. There's no such thing. As well as emptying your wallet, do they actually correct the problem? No. 
some some of them yeah some of them in the early stages uh, would would do things that might help you along they might scan your registry for stuff and stuff like that uh, but for the most part the the scam is they get you to um, to enter something in the run command which brings up the log file and then the log file shows you um, entry after entry after entry that's a mistake okay and then they say oh well your computer's infected look at all those entries in there that's normal <laughs> all of these entries in that log file that are a mistake after two weeks of computer use that's normal that's it's what's doing what it's supposed to do so how do you get down to the page then um you can try and hold down the uh, on off button until the computer quits which takes you know two three or four seconds you hear the click and it's shut itself off uh, just by tapping it you may put the computer to sleep which is not shutting it off okay now in most cases with this old-timey scam here um, you could get you could get control of your computer by going into safe mode you know when you start the computer back up tap the F8 key and you would go into safe mode and and this would not start but the uh, scammers damn soon found that, that that was a problem for them and so they they uh, uh, rewrote the software to make sure it started up on um, uh, on uh, safe mode it turns out that the only way now to get out of this is to uh, make the computer start in repair mode and when you've done that you can roll it back a day before the infection and it will usually run fine I mean that's how I fix it I just may I just roll a computer back a day yeah. can you presume then that if it was working fine yesterday you get this mess today Yesterday is still clear. Yeah, yeah, and and when you go through that procedure, you'll the the software will show you uh, a couple of dates that it can go back to. It may be yesterday or the day before, or maybe a week ago when you did an update. But it will show you a safe date that you can you can do that. So yes, uh, the presumption that yesterday was okay is okay. okay. Is that just a restore? Um, yes, it's a system restore. Okay, so the other website or web scam, website scam on this is is also a, another one that locks locks up your computer. Um, it'll tell you that uh, you have a, a known nasty nasty like Zeus uh, and Zbot. And it wants to say that it's looking at your bank passwords and yeah, other which is what Zeus did. It looked at all your passwords. Yeah. And, and would try and uh, get into your bank accounts and, and such like that. So uh, maybe if you're uh, a little bit more knowledgeable user, you would see that and say, oh, I got a problem. Uh, there's the number to call. <laughs> Again, they wheedle down into your wallet and it's all gone. Uh, and this, this one usually locks your computer. Uh, it also gives you uh, if, if it uh, brings up a web page, uh, in all probability it will have something to do with China. This one is www.china first, first tallow.com or something. And it goes way, way down into a, into a set of uh, things in the background and alert and a plug in and all of that. Um, and it might even start talking to you, it might even have uh, audio which is you know telling you warning 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 and the nice lady tells you to call this number so if you called that number what would happen oh a nice man would or lady would start talking to you about all your problems and say we can fix this up for you and would get halfway through the fix up um, procedure and then say to you and for only 
uh, $328, we can make sure that this never happens to you again. You're protected for one year. Okay? And uh, you are then living in a cardboard box. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you may have to go live under a bridge. <laughs> so, these are coming in on your website. On your yeah, website. these are coming in as web pages. Yeah, and and the thing of it is 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 um, when the web page comes, it can often as not uh, be configured in such a way as to lock your computer so you can't get out of it. There are others that do just that. They you know they are programs that lock your computer, and um, even uh, a couple of others that um, uh, once they've got your computer locked up, then they encrypt all your files. Okay, crypto lockers is what they're called. And they encrypt all your files. And now if you want those files back, you have to pay. Okay, you have to pay if you want them back. If you're a small business, you'll pay. Because I'm sorry, I can't help you. They've encrypted those files with 256-bit encryption. And unless you get the password, you're not getting them. Can you block them? No. <laughs> Once the procedure starts to encrypt your files, it only takes a second or two. And it goes through your hard drive, it goes through any other peripheral drives you might have on it. In some cases it will even go out. Uh, if, if you uh, have uh, something uh, like Dropbox, and Dropbox on your computer is a folder, as well as being on the cloud, it will go to the folder, to the cloud, and encrypt those files as well. So being on the cloud is not safe enough. There, if you've had those files on there for a long time, I might, I might be able to get back half of them. Maybe. And that's a big maybe. But as far as decrypting the files, you're toast. Something else that uh, comes at you um, from websites is ask.com. I don't know how many times I've seen this in the village. I walk in and fire up your web browser and there it is, ask.com or search protect is another one. Where they come in from God only knows, but they get in. And what they do is, number one, they change. What they're really doing is they're changing um, your uh, your internet browser homepage to this. Okay. In some cases, they are also putting a program in your computer that uh, um, makes sure that. When you're searching for stuff, even from Google, you're in fact going through ask.com. That becomes the default. It becomes the default, along with the fact that if okay, you get rid of ask.com from the from your default web page. Okay, you're back to Google. But if you don't get rid of the program that came with it, when you do a search, it's not searching through. Google, it's through, it's the default search is ask.com and it will bring you ask results, not Google results. Isn't that sweet? No. <laughs> well, somebody's getting paid from ask.com. Is it dangerous or just annoying? It's annoying. Yeah. It's annoying. Can you go into Google and go into the settings? Yes, you can. And get rid of it. Yeah, you can do that. Um, there are uh, now, uh, if you're using a Chrome browser and you get Ask, you can get rid of it there. Uh, if you're using Internet Explorer and you've got Ask, you can get rid of it there sometimes. And you can also get rid of it from Edge. Uh, Ed, they are all a little bit, uh, um, you have to sort of know what you're doing, but uh, you can usually find uh, a video on YouTube that will show you exactly how to get rid of it. Um, 
the easiest ones that will show you how to get rid of them. So sometimes you can go to YouTube and, and find out um, stuff that will help you get rid of this stuff. Now, there's one other one that, that I'm going to mention. It just came to mind that I didn't put it in this presentation. Um, that uh, if, if you put in s search terms like how do I get rid of dot 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 malware, it will stop working. <laughs> okay? Something inside of the web browser has been compromised that it won't let you search for how to get rid of your problem. <laughs> That's an old trick. I don't know whether it's still being used or not. I haven't seen it in quite a while. But that's one that used to pop up all the time. It would just stop you from searching for a way to fix your problem. Is Bing one of these things? Um, Bing's owned by Microsoft. Yeah, Bing is a search engine. It's still annoying, but... Yeah. And, and, and Bing searches and, and provides search results in such a way that they are really annoying. Because for the most part, the first page is all ads or the first two-thirds of a page of 20 or 50 uh, results are all ads from, from Bing. It, it's, oh, it's terrible. Um, so if you see things like this, you don't have Google anymore. It could also be uh, from um, Search Protect. There are a few others out there. Uh, but if you see things like this, uh, quick links to, uh, to other um, websites, Especially um, ask. Especially to the ask <laughs> website. Um, is it going to take you to Vimeo? Is it going to take you to Facebook or Yahoo or wherever you want to Gmail, wherever you want to go? Yeah, it might do that. But it's also um, gathering information about how you're doing it. Okay? I don't trust these people as far as I could throw a pickup truck when you put your... Uh, your authentication credentials in. So if you have it and you can't get rid of it, give me a call. It has to go. It's it's I don't trust it. All right. Shopping hijacks. This is uh this is a bad one. Um your browser will misbehave in such a way as that it will, uh, and you can't stop it from doing it, it will start to open web pages um, with, uh, from shopping sites. Okay? Shop for this, shop for that, shop for the other thing. Uh, and, and all you want to do is, is uh, find a really great uh, dog food. Okay? But all of a sudden it will open up ten windows for all different kinds of pet supplies from all different kinds of shoppers okay annoying yeah it's annoying but it's also a browser hijack you can't do anything else but what they want you to do okay you can't go to the sites that you would like to go to Facebook won't work you're, you're gonna wind on up up on a shopping site okay it's it's just terrible what happens but can you stop it? I'm sorry, no. Where do come from? Okay, we'll talk about where stuff like this comes from. And then there's the ever fave FBI or RCMP scam. <laughs> this one locks your computer. And I'm the one that gets it unlocked. But for many, many, many people of our vintage, this is extremely frightening. Because when you read it, it says that your computer has been locked by law enforcement because they have discovered things like kitty porn and stolen movies and all that kind of stuff on your computer and call this number and um, we will allow you to pay the fine through our website and unlock your computer. Allow you to pay the fine 
through our website and we will unlock your computer. I'll say it one more time. <laughs> Allow you to pay the fine through our website. And um, you will have to go to the gas station and buy these special cards called UCash. This is also called the, U, the, the UCash. You can go to a gas station and buy, and it's like Western Union, okay? You buy these special cards and they give you a special number and then you, you give them the special number and they've got your money, okay? UCash. It's ever a favorite, but like I said, for folks of our vintage, it is extremely frightening and that makes it um, where if 3% uh, of the people that see this follow through on that telephone number, that's a lot of money, folk, because a million of these a day pop up. It's a lot of money. Unfortunately, um, folk fall for it more than once. More than once. These are all what we call drive-bys. You go to a website. The website has been compromised by a hacker, a bad guy. Or the ad server for the website has been compromised. So instead of feeding you ads down the right side of your page or the banner across the top, one of those will feed you a program. Okay? And that's what most of these are, is a program. It will feed you a program, it will go into your temporary files, and um, it will execute from there, and uh, infect your computer with whatever it wants. Like I said, the, the, the infections on the website are usually temporary as far as the website owner goes. Uh, they, he may clean them out right away or he has tools that automatically clean them out, but if it stays there unmolested for 20 minutes, hey, a lot of traffic can go through that website in 20 minutes or that ad server in 20 minutes, it can go, a lot of traffic is going to go through there and every single one that lands on that page or that ad server is going to download that nasty. So, can you stop it? Uh, good question. The Safari browser in Mac, you know, on a Macintosh computer, is usually not subject to this stuff. The Safari, the Safari browser on Windows is. If you have a Linux computer, you're probably safe. Um, That's because if you have a Windows computer, you're toast. And here's why. I think I've explained this before, but I'm going to explain it again for the new folk. Most viruses, malware, adwares that can infect your computer are written for Windows. Windows is 95% of all the computers on the planet. Windows XP, uh, Windows Vista, and on up to the modern computer operating system for Windows. It's 95% of all the computers on the planet. Why would anybody waste their time for 3% of the computers on the planet that are Mac? And another maybe 1% that are Linux. That only makes 99%. Yeah, well, there are others. Um, but you understand what I'm saying here. Why, why would I... Any, anybody in that business wastes their time. It's Windows, Windows, Windows. And these people from Romania, Russia, and the Ukraine, they know more about the Windows operating system than the folks that wrote it. How does that happen? How do they learn that more? 
what you're bound to. Years of pounding on it. They take a screwdriver to it every day. And they find these things. They find these vulnerabilities. They know where to look. Do they get money? Oh yeah, big time. Okay. Big time. For every exploit that they that they find, they can sell to the exploit user market and they get money big time. They could sell the the uh, the knowledge of the exploit back to Microsoft, but Microsoft over the years has been really, really stupid about it and won't pay. Okay? These are called bug reports. And um, Microsoft has decided they won't pay. Now Android which is for telephones and tablets, uh, they uh, pay big time for bounties. If, if you find an exploit on an Android phone or an Android tablet, you tell Google about it, they'll pay big time once they've decided that, yes, you know what you're talking about and this exploit is real. So zero-day exploits, they're, they're not very common in, the, in that realm, but zero-day exploits, and when we say zero-day, what we mean is that the guy that found the exploit kept quiet about it. He didn't tell anybody. He just sold it. And the guy he sold it to, he said to him, don't tell anybody about this exploit. It'll work for a couple, three weeks and maybe a month or more. Some of them have worked for years. And Microsoft doesn't know about them. And so if you keep your mouth shut, you can make this work for you for a long time and get lots of money every month. Okay. On the on the Apple thing, is it is it just because of the ninety five percent or it is. do they have any technical part of their program that stops that kind of thing from getting in? They have a technical part of their program that stops it from getting in. Uh, and basically it works like this. A thousand years ago, when computers were first uh, designed to work together on some sort of a network. The original computers that did that, um, the people knew, the engineers knew, that what they had to do was they had to make it so that your computer couldn't see her computer and her computer couldn't see yours uh, unless certain conditions were met. Okay, so user accounts were separated entirely from the operating system of the computer. Okay, you could take your user account and you, if you got all of it, you could basically install that single file onto another different computer without your user account and it would work once you rebooted it. Okay, so the operating system was completely separate from the user account. Along came Bill Gates and didn't give that much thought. And so the user account for Windows became tightly integrated into the operating system of the computer which made it vulnerable because if you knew things about the user account you knew almost everything about how the computer was configured for security. Okay. It happened and Windows ain't going to change. They're not going to change to a to another um, In fact they're even more integrated. <laughs> yeah. They're not they're not going to change to another system whereby the in, the user account is not integrated into the operating system. It's just not the way they do things. Okay, most of the time, let's talk about Facebook. Facebook, you know, is, is a, a, a web-based program. And we're going to talk about Facebook worms for a minute. Most of the time, when you're on Facebook and your computer becomes compromised, it's because Facebook tricked you into something. Okay? Well, the hacker tricked you into it. But um, as an example... Um, somebody sends you a little video and you click on it and want to play it and this pops up. Divex plugin required. 
Well, you may have heard of DivX. Yeah, that plays videos. Okay, so I'll just go and get it, install a plugin. Well, that's how the compromise works, folks, because it's not a plugin. It's a uh, nasty. Um, and so once that happens, your your Facebook account Pro, your Facebook account probably will become compromised. It's going to gather up your authentications for Facebook and anything else that you have um, logging in through Facebook. Because lots of programs say, oh, well, if you have a Facebook account, use your authentication from Facebook to log in here. Do it once. You'll never have to do it again. Yeah. Um, so, Facebook worms will trick you. Um, they will, um, there's other tricks too. Um, if you get <coughs> nagged on your Facebook page, not uh, from your login page, but from your, your logged in Facebook page, if you get nagged to verify your account, don't do that, because that, is, that authentication stuff is going to go off to some nasty guy. It's not going to go back to Facebook, okay? Verify your account from your Facebook page. No, never, ever, ever, ever do that. You get friend requests from folks that are already your friends. How many times have you done that? Okay, so you click on, so you re-click on Friend? No. Friend or foe? You know, you, you re-click, you re-click. Well, I still want to be your friend. You know, click. Okay, things happen in the background that maybe you wouldn't like. Okay, clicking links from folks that you don't know. Now, you may, there may be a message sitting in your Facebook from someone you do know. And their message is, well, here's one of my friends, and here's their here's a, a link to a great little cat video that you should see. You're clicking a link from a stranger. Not from your friend, from a stranger. Perhaps it was your your friend never sent you that. The stranger did. Okay? But it's a trick. It's tricked you into clicking that link and downloading stuff. And clicking on links from folks who may not know how to make a link. How many of you here know how to make a link in Facebook? Raise your hand. No one. Okay? So if you were to get a post, a Facebook post from one of your friends in this room and then had a link in it? Well, they don't know how to do that. Why would you click that link? Don't do that. It's a trick. If they didn't do it, some stranger did it and they're trying to do you. Okay? Well, before we continue on with uh, the next one, another trick that Facebook likes to, um, that people on Facebook like to do is um, the, the ones called, um, we call them, oh uh, God, what did we call them again? I don't know. Sites. <laughs> sites that say, ooh, this must be something I want to look at. The words escapes my mind. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> the, <laughs> um, like makes you want to say yes. I want to read this and click on this link because it's like top ten facts of why Donald Trump is stupid. <laughs> I want to read this. But um, those 
websites can also be very dangerous as well um, and can often give you clickbait. That's the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. Uh, we call them clickbait websites. They give you information that sounds interesting to you, like top 10 reasons why Selena Gomez is a good actor or something. But even though if your friends have sent you the link and like maybe they've looked at it as well, it doesn't always mean that they're safe. Um, just means they were lucky enough not to get hit by something. So be careful with um, clickbait cert, um, websites that unless it's like from BuzzFeed. Well, even, even then, then. <laughs> BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed is a clickbait site. Okay, Nothing they will clickbait. put stories on BuzzFeed that you just have to click on that. Okay, there's a there's another one that's 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 really really, um, it, it's the ultimate in clickbait. It's called Upworthy. Yeah, it's called Upworthy, and that means that the more people that click on it, click on this clickbait story, the more to the front it goes. <laughs> So you're clicking it up into upworthiness for other people. That's just plain nasty. I mean, Selena Gomez is a sexy girl, ask him. But <laughs> do you taste. really, really want to know a lot of stuff about her? Ask him. <laughs> Which okay. was Selena Gomez again? <laughs> I just said names. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right. Continuing on. Woman. Viruses we all know can come in through email. And 99.9% .9 of the time they come in as an attachment. Um, most, uh, a lot of you can recognize this email format. Brenda, you'll know what it is. It's Outlook, right? That's right. And, but, so it's given you the message here, um, and who it's from, and who it's to, and all of the rest of it. But it's also, um, it says it's a voice message dot zip. Now, I have my telephone system at home set up so that if I'm not there, uh, it, um, it will forward voicemail to my email. Huh? Forwards voicemail to my email. A lot of people know that. A lot of people just understand that's the way it works. Hey, it's great. I get email on my phone. It's voicemail from my phone. I don't have to wait three hours to get home to see who wants to talk to me. But there's a couple of things going on here. First off, if you don't have that service from your telephone provider and you get something like this, in uh, in your mail, a voicemail message. Well, you know that that ain't right. Especially if it comes to you, well, that ain't right. Uh, and the other thing that it's done, if you look carefully, it says voice message dot zip. Well, ninety percent of the time, or even most of the time just about every time, a voicemail message coming in on email is an mp3. It's a music file. Okay? Or dot .wave, typically. Yeah. Dot .wave. Dot .wave or mp3. The other thing that it's telling you here, which is the real tip off, is that it's 11 kilobytes. That's minuscule. Okay? That's about 13 characters in Notepad. About 13 characters in Notepad will give you 11 kilobytes when you save it as a file. Okay? So, it's telling you there's something inside that zip file that's very, very small. But if you click on it, it will go somewhere. It will do something. It's like a batch file that says, go to the internet, get this, load it on the computer, and this guy's toast. Okay? In just about every case, if you get 
um, uh, an email message and it's a zip file dot zip don't touch it a dot doc if you I recommend that you call your friend who sent you the dot doc and say did you send me this and if they say no crash right away make it go away don't click on links unless you absolutely for certain sure know that the person that sent sent you this sent you this it can be very very dangerous um, word documents dot doc excel files uh, presentations dot ppt okay they all can have code inside of them that yes the documents there but also inside of there is a program called a macro and all of these are capable of running macro programs and so you click on the dot doc and the macro runs in the background and it went to the internet and said download this stuff okay. unfortunately so our rule is if you don't know where it came from make it go away unless you can confirm and you, it's as simple as you either call your friend or you send them an email back not a reply to this but a different email saying did you send me this and they will confirm or not you don't for something like this you don't have to open it right away you can wait okay you can wait Okay, there are two others that we want to talk about today, and that's the web plugin exploits. Now, when we say plugins, we are talking about Adobe Flash, Adobe Reader, Adobe Products, and Java. If you get a, a flash up on your screen that looks something like this, saying a new flash player is required, or flash or and it's got another box of a flash player update don't touch it close it and get away from there it's telling you something here in the address bar it's telling you something it's telling you www.adobeupdate2014.com that is not an Adobe website. Adobe's .org, right? No, it's a .com. Oh. But it's not Adobe Update 2014. It's Adobe.com. Okay? It's not. Look in the address bar. It'll tell you. This ain't Adobe, folk. But um, the other thing is, is this should never happen on a web page if it does it's a lie this is a lie if you need to update your Adobe down in the lower right you'll find um, the Adobe flash symbol and when you start your computer up for the first 10 seconds or so it may give you a little box down in the lower right saying your Adobe updates ready click here when the little raising comes in down there that says you have an Adobe update or something, is that one okay though? Yes, if, if it works from here, yeah. if it's working from there, it's from Adobe. If it comes in as part of a web page, don't touch it. It's a lie. Okay. The other one is Java. Here again, a genuine Java update will come in as the little Java um, icon looks like Java with the little cup okay down here in the lower right when you start your computer uh, except in your case Java don't work no more <laughs> um, when you start your computer it will give you a little bubble saying your Java updates ready uh, click here to make it go if you get it as a web page like this don't touch it 
make it go away. As a matter of fact, the best way to do that is to right click. I'm just going to get out of, no, I'm not going to get out of her for a second. Um, on your taskbar, you will see um, whatever you're using, whether it's Chrome or Internet Explorer or, or Edge, whatever browser you're using, and the little square that says the browser you're using, right click on that and you will be prompted to close it. Do that. Don't touch this web page in any place. It could be um, any place you touch it could be um, following the link that this web page is. Close the web page from your taskbar. Right click on the task, uh, on, on, uh, if it's Chrome, right click on Chrome. If it's Internet Explorer, right click on Internet Explorer. And you will be prompted that you can close the page from there. Close. Do that. Don't touch it. Also, I can tell exactly what happens when you get this and you click it. Mm -hmm. I did it. <laughs> I, was, I was playing a game. And I just looked up and my computer says, J Java needs an update. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I look up again. It's downloading a bunch of Chinese things. My wallpaper changes. My, I can't read anything. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> well. It took me that's... about a whole day to fix that. <laughs> yeah, it would. It happens. Yeah. Okay, the last thing that can be compromised, as we said at the beginning, is uh, computer peripherals. Uh, peripherals are anything that plugs into your computer through a USB port or even a parallel port. Um, the, uh, the newest stuff, um, flash memory cards, um, thumb drives, um, yes, hard hard drives that um, come in a little box, no bigger than a pack of cigarettes. Okay, um, they can be compromised if they came from a friend. Okay, they can be compromised. They can also be compromised um, from a website when the website detects your computer. It is going to say to its uh, if it needs if it wants to to uh, compromise a peripheral like a thumb drive, it's going to go through the computer and ask it, "Do you have a thumb drive attached to you?" And if the computer says yes, it will attack it. The same thing uh, for memory sticks and smart chips and stuff like that. Do you have these uh, these things attached to you? And if the computer says yes, it will attack it. Now, one of the fun things that hackers like to do is just leave thumb drives lying around. And those thumb drives can be set up to be as a run as plugged in. So the moment you plug it in, it will auto run and you've just been hacked by Mr. Who, who's it by some guy named Ted. Yeah, uh, a four gig thumb drive. Uh, to buy wholesale, they're about 28 cents. Okay? And just about every time you find a thumb drive in the street, I can guarantee <laughs> you, you're going to plug it in to find out what's on it. I, I can guarantee it. I can tell you this till the cows come home. Throw it in the garbage. Don't touch it. I gotta know <laughs> what's on it. And you plug it in and you're done. Okay. Penetration testers for large companies do this. Uh, as part of um, how they show the company can be compromised. Now, Penetration testers will go to the CEO and say, we're going to do this. This is how it works. Some employee is going to pick this up and plug it into his computer to see what it is. You cannot, while we're doing this, 
and after we're done or ever fire this employee for doing what we're about to trick him into doing because no one no one can resist okay so they'll tell the CEO we're gonna do this to some poor schmuck who's working for you but this is a demonstration he will never do it again Maybe. Right? Maybe. <laughs> but And he will be an object lesson for every other employee, but you can't fire him just because we tricked him. Okay? And they go ahead and they do it. They, they'll throw three or four or five of them around the parking lot. And, yep, by the end of the day, they they know. The CD-ROM that you've got there, is that the disc that I put pictures and music on? Yeah. How does that get well, it you can uh, you can get a disc from a friend who, who that that has been compromised. It can have a, run, uh, a an executable program on it um, that uh, when you when you put it into the tray, uh, the tray uh, or the computer uh, can look at the peripheral and say, okay, if there's a program there, run it if you find it. Okay. Um, years ago. Sony Music, this, this goes back almost 10 years, Sony Music in their fight against uh, piracy, um, every Sony Music CD you bought had what was called a root kit on it. And that root kit was a program that installed itself on your computer or anybody else's computer that that desk played in and reported back to Sony everything you had on that computer. Boy, when people found out about that, that was one of the first things that almost destroyed Sony. That's you know, poor as, as years go along, there were others because they're just plain old stupid people. But um, that's one of the first things that almost destroyed them, that whole idea of putting a kid on somebody else's computer and not telling them. I think the only thing that's keeping Sony alive now is the PlayStation. That's it. Yeah, and even then, <laughs> their their user base is going to get hacked again, and that'll be the end of them. Any questions about what we talked about? Yes. Okay. Suppose the scenario is you're you're in a, what you think a reputable site, Google's uh, store, uh, Chrome Games, whatever. Yeah. And you say, oh, a free game, oh, I'm going to go get it. You go get it, you download the whole thing. You watch it downloading and you put it in. Maybe it's compromised, you put something on. Can you also put it on if you bookmark it and stick it in your favorites? Can you put this virus on by doing, putting the game in your favorites? No. No, no the, the favorites is, is just a link to the website. It's just a link. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, if you gave that, to a friend, oh, yeah. uh, and they clicked on it, and they didn't have this compromise, they may get it. Okay. But then again, like I said at the beginning of this, uh, these compromises most of the time only last 15, 20 minutes until the, the, uh, the IT people at the company figure out what's going on and they, they fix it. Okay. But in that 15, 20 minutes, a lot of people can be, it can be problematic. And the other thing I just want to say before uh, we end this is, don't be afraid to go on websites or anything just because of what we said. Because the chances of bad things happening to you are slim. But at the same time, like, there, even if they weren't slim, there's nothing you can do. It's not your fault if anything happens. Unless you are doing <laughs> um, really risky behaviors. <laughs> Okay. So am I really helping when once a week I clean it with the malware bites and you're, you're helping the because uh, uh, the, you know, full scan on us. Yeah, yeah, you're helping because your computer's cleaned up and uh and, and uh you're you are less likely to forward stuff to your friends. Okay, by accident or design. You're less likely. Folk, that is two o'clock. That's a wrap. Thank you so much. We'll get this up as quickly as we can.
That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.